Hello and welcome to the 2017 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. My name is Brian Casey. I'm editor-in-chief of AntMini.com. Uh, pleased to have with me again this year Dr. Paul Chang of the University of Chicago. Uh, Dr. Chang, thanks for being with us. Thanks for inviting me again. Yeah. So uh, the last few years we've been talking about radiology informatics issues and uh, specifically artificial intelligence. It seems like artificial intelligence has really exploded uh, this year at RSNA. What are you seeing out there? Well, as we discussed uh, last year, we uh, continue to slavishly ride that Gartner hype curve, all right, which we tend to do with almost any potentially disruptive technology in IT or informatics. You know, whether it was the promise of electronic medical record or PACS years ago, uh, big data, that was the big theme yeah. a few years ago. What we tend to do in medicine and radiology in particular is we tend to buy very early into the hype both positively and negatively. Oh my gosh, this is the savior that's going to help me take care of my patients. Or, oh my gosh, this is going to displace me or threaten what I do as a radiologist. Uh, we tend to buy very early into the hype, but we tend to actually be relatively late adopters at the phase where I call this technology appropriately consumed. We eventually get there for almost anything. And it's funny because it always we tend to overpromise. We buy early into the hype, but it takes longer than we anticipate always before it can be appropriately consumed. And what's funny is in retrospect, when you talk to radiologists and say, yeah, well, what was the impact of the PACs or uh, big data or whatever, you go, oh yeah, you're right. We, we've done that for a few years. Eh, you know, it's just what we do. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the path we go through. So this year, when I look at the technical exhibits and look at the scientific abstracts and refresher courses, we are basically on time on this, this ride, okay? So it's absolutely true, we see a lot more hype, which you would expect, but you're beginning to see glimmers of reality, where people are really trying to make this real. Still early times, no question. All right, there are still challenges that we can get into in a bit. But one of the more promising things I see, at least in the technical exhibit, because in my mind, being a very practical person, unless I can actually use it, which means if I can buy it and actually have it used and support it, uh, it's still early times. What I'm beginning to see uh, in, the, in the technical exhibits is that vendors are beginning to understand that the real utility, the sweet spot, the low-hanging fruit for the, these technologies, artificial intelligence, deep learning, what have you, all big data type approaches. The real sweet spot is not the big bold thing. I mean, in many ways, we kind of made a mistake, which is again, typical of hype. We tend to leapfrog to the most extreme use case, right? And after all, that feeds into the hype. When you have an extreme use case, like, oh, we can replace radiologists. This is going to improve or su be superior to radiologists in making diagnosis. That's sexy. That gets, you know, the Wall Street Journal writing an article on it. It gets the venture capitalists very interested. And that feeds into the hype. And don't get me wrong, that's kind of important if you're trying to generate revenue or capital to invest in this new technology. The problem is when you leapfrog to these very ambitious uh, use cases, you tend to overpromise because as we can get to in a few minutes, uh, that, that there's some huge problems with that. What I'm beginning to see at this meeting is people understand, you know what, those are pretty ambitious goals that we probably can't do yet. What we're beginning to pick is what I call the minimally heuristic sweet spot. We're beginning not to say, oh, we're going to replace radiologists or whatever, but we're saying, can we use technology to hit the low-hanging fruit pain points that introduce inefficiency and variability in, in, in radiology? For instance, you're beginning to see people use these technologies appropriately to improve the efficiency and quality of image acquisition where you're embedding deep learning systems in the image processing in, uh, of our acquisition devices, or CT and MR. You're beginning to see uh, the application of deep learning and similar kinds of, 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 of applications and technologies in the overall workflow orchestration. This is a good sign. It's not as sexy, you're not getting a lot of press releases about it, but it is exactly what you would expect in this hype cycle, where you're beginning to see people say, Let, this is real, this is eventually going to be appropriately consumed, let's actually look for sweet spots that actually move the needle, that are must-haves rather than nice-to-haves. Yeah. There's still challenges though, 
All right, and the challenges are the same as last year. One of the biggest challenges I see is again, we our IT infrastructure is not mature enough to either feed or train or consume these technologies. Uh, deep learning systems uh, in many ways are dumb. They're very capable, but unlike more traditional machine learning approaches where you have a preconceived feature model, mm -hmm. you know, deep learning's advantage is also its disadvantage. Its advantage is you don't have to have a preconceived feature set or, inform or model. You just feed it a lot of vetted data. The problem is you need a lot of vetted data. Yeah. And as a result, uh, that's why a lot of our use cases are kind of pedestrian because they're being driven by uh, data availability rather than compelling use case. So again, this is a huge challenge. Uh, we, we need to, to, to improve our IT infrastructure, go beyond a PAX or EMR centric perspective to be able to feed not only deep learning but all big data cloud type decision support resources that are going to help us practice medicine. Um, that's a good head strategy by the way because this is early times we can't pick a winner yet, but one way we can pretend, one way we can actually prepare for the eventual adoption of this technology is to prepare our infrastructure. It's a good hedge strategy, it's one I recommend. Now, when it comes to radiologists, uh, how would you advise that they, your regular community radiologists, they're, they're sitting there, they're hitting the work, work list and that sort of thing, how would you advise them to prepare for artificial intelligence? What can they do? Okay, so that's a great question. Uh, and like I said, it's very early times. You know, right? And so I'm excluding the people who are, you know, the data scientists, the informaticians who are doing active research, okay? But when you're talking about a, a, a radiologist practicing medicine is trying to optimize what they do for their patients, what's I think important is to understand that it's very early yet, all right? I think it's still too early to pick a winner just yet. So I would probably avoid doing that. I think it's important to understand this technology, that, that means attending the refresher courses, yeah. reading this, understand why organized radiology, such as the ACR and RCA, are actively pursuing through institutes and journals, trying to rigorously evaluate this, and this is critically important. I would actually, this is one of the biggest problems and threats I see to this hype cycle. That's a little bit different than the other hype cycles we've gone to. One of the problems that I see with deep learning is what I call the archive phenomenon. Now archive, A-R-X-I-V, is a very popular archive where people put publications in, in, the, in the mathematics, physics, and computer science world. It is a very popular, very useful archive. It is moderated but not peer reviewed. That is perfectly fine when you're putting up a new algorithm because you have peer review. It's a, it's a democratized type way of evaluating. The problem is that community does not know how to evaluate these systems clinically. And one of the things I'm beginning to see is, is a little bit problematic to me, and that is people, because they want to get into the hype and all that, instead of actually publishing in domain-specific journals that can actually critically evaluate the clinical utility of these technologies, they're putting it up on archive. Yeah, I think I know the paper you're talking about. Exactly, and that kind of paper, unfortunately, gets a lot of hype, right? You get the, because the, the, the general press, unlike you guys, are not that sophisticated. So they go, oh, it's published, this must be real, when in reality, those papers are not peer reviewed. So I think one of the things that's critically important for the practicing radiologists is to understand and support initiatives such as the ACR and the RSNA, why we need to be engaged in the evaluation of the systems. Because deep learning is a great apt term. Deep not only means capable, it also means obscure, which means it's going to be very difficult to validate these systems. And unless you have domain knowledge, clinicians that understand how to clinically evaluate these systems, this is a problem. And so to avoid that hype, we need to understand how to do it and how to stay engaged. I think the second recommendation I make for, for practicing radiologists is to work closely with the IT team to educate them. We tend to be leaders. We tend to drag, I, radiology has always been leaders in the enterprise and dragging IT into the modern age. We did it with PACs, we did it with, deep, with big data and analytics, same thing here. We need to do the same, play our same role of being leaders in the enterprise to educate IT and saying, look, it's early times, but there is no question that these technologies, not just deep learning, machine intelligence, 
uh, big data, cloud-based decision support will help us and will be absolutely necessary for us to maintain quality, reduce variability, improve efficiency, but we cannot be able, we won't be able to leverage it maximally unless we improve our IT infrastructure. That's a good thing we can do now. We can improve our IT infrastructure because no matter what happens, no matter what technology wins, whether it be deep learning, Bayesian networks, big data, doesn't matter. Whatever wins, we'll be ready to consume. Very good, all right, Dr. Chang, always fascinating. Thanks. Signing off for antmini.com, my name is Brian Casey.